Yet we are going to introduce to you uh, a guest, a special guest for this Shepardesis Online today. Outstanding in every. Can you tell us about our guest, Reverend Christabel? Um, our guest today is a, a spoken word guru. He's been to so many places, so many countries. He's just so good at what he does, and he's really, really an inspiring person to the youths out there. So he was the main judge of Limaf 2022. He's none other than Mark Alonge. If you're not jealous, you put your hands together for Mark Alonge. He blessed us by his presence. God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. I'm sure you have a mic. I'm sure you have a mic here. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> okay, before before we interview you, I want you to watch this video. Okay. Please, um, can you play me the video? I ask you to prepare. Just listen and be blessed. The wall. The wall at Jericho was an impenetrable force to any army that was trying to overtake the city. Before we deal with the war, the attacking troops we had to navigate their way across the 27 foot wide, 9 foot deep pit that lined the outer edges of the city. Then there was the wall itself, 17 foot high, 5 foot deep, pure mass of solid stone. If the attacking army managed to get this far without being shot down by archers, all that was left was to defeat the well trained Canaanite army that was waiting within. This was the reality for a young leader named Joshua and his ragtag Israelite army. These Israelites, who had seen an entire generation leave and die while wandering through the desert, were tired, hungry, and facing what seems like an impossible task a hopeless situation. Now I don't live very long, but I've lived long enough to notice that running into wars is a part of life. And the bigger the war, the more hopeless the situation can seem. The large force of sickness, loss, divorce, addiction, the power all around us, and the same impenetrable. And just like the war at Jericho, these wars rarely stand alone. The wars of our lives are often accompanied by a deep pit of pain and suffering and despair when all the war and army of hopelessness attacks us on every side. The question is asked all the time, if God loves us so much and is so powerful, then how do we allow these wars to pop up around me? Now I don't pretend to have the answers to any of those questions. Nor do I pretend to understand just how deep or dark your suffering might be. I simply want to suggest that maybe God does his best work from seemingly hopeless situations. When I read the Bible, I read about people and characters, all who face seemingly hopeless situations. In fact, I cannot find a single person in the Bible who walks faithfully with God without first facing a hopeless situation. Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden into the world, a hopeless case. Joseph was betrayed for, by his brothers for his pride and put in prison, a hopeless case. Moses was cornered on the banks of the Red Sea with the most powerful army in the world, bringing down his neck, a hopeless case. Gideon was 300 against 300,000. David stood across the valley from a bloodthirsty giant. Esther was a woman trying to gain a word with a prideful king. Daniel's roommate was a lion. His friends were thrown in an oven. Jonah sat at his job and lost a while. And Jesus Christ was humiliated, hung on a cross, and buried in a tomb. Buried all hopes of the revolution that was fought for for thousands of years. Now, everybody was ready to kill the book. 
on these stories. The end came over. But if there's one thing we can learn from the scriptures is that we can never place a period where God has placed a comma. shows up. Because Joseph became second in command. The Red Sea parted. Even one without lifting a weapon. The lion's head was on a place. Ezra spoke and the king is in. The lion turned the lion. The oven fell like room temperature. Neither got repaired. Peter became the world. The world rejoiced. Twelve baskets full were left over. Lazarus was just kidding. See what he did in the church. It's not only possible, it's favorable. Because only God can turn a mess into a message. Only God can turn a trial into a trial, a test into a testimony, and a victim into a victory. Power is not perfect in weakness. So let us rejoice in our trials and hold on swearingly to the hope we profess. Because he who promised is faithful, was faithful, and will always be faithful no matter how hopeless and thank you. Praise God. Now, <laughs> you know, M Mark is very surprised. He's very surprised. Um, I'm, a, I'm a careful observer. Yes. When Reverend Christopher brought you and I heard what he spoke and the things he did, I, when I went back, then I said, okay, I've invited him for my program without digging. Let me not just dig physically, let me dig spiritually. I dug spiritually, then I fell on this video. So I gave this video to my team that prepared this video for me. I will show Mark when he comes. Hallelujah. This is 2015. Is it, is it true? 2015. Hallelujah. Now, even before you introduce yourself, there's something I want to appreciate about you. This is consistency. Um, this spoken word is not very common in Cameroon. It's not very really common in Africa as maybe gospel artist of music and and you started it passionately and I was surprised because I never knew this was your first performance. Your very first. Is, is my, my very first. This was the first time I performed. The first time. The very first time. So, this is the first time. And 2015. This is 2022. You're still doing it passionately. Consistently. With all the resilience. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um. I, I see a lot of potential in you. Not just that you're doing spoken word, but just that you have the ability to, to hold on to something. Many start with one thing. They leave it and do another. another when you meet them, they'll say that, uh, this thing, I, I used to be very good in it. And I tell the church, I hate past glory. If Messi tells himself he used to play very well at 23, why is he not playing now? He's playing. That is what we need in the house of God. What do you do best? How long have you done it? Can you continuously do it? There must be challenges. Hallelujah. Amen. And praise God. Amen. So, in few words, 
Who is, who is Mark Alonge? Remain blessed, Shepherd. God bless you. This is incredible. I have to say that I am almost, I'm in tears, literally. Um, the fact that you took the time and went and this, and found my first video, I'm sure God revealed that to you. Because this video is so emotional for me because it's the very first time I, and I, I, I had to overcome a lot of fear. I had a lot of stage fright. Okay. I was very, very scared. And the very first time I performed, and just the fact that you played that video, I want to really say I'm, I'm really appreciative of it. And I moved deeply, really Amen. deeply. Thank you so much. God bless you. I, I think uh, Mark Alunge, um, I'm, I'm a spoken word artist. Um, this is what I believe God has called me to do. And um, I, I, I have worked with several different organizations. I've traveled to different places. But then I don't think... Um, I think that literally I'm a child of God. Amen. Born of God. Hallelujah. Present. And I think this spoken word that I do is my assignment that God has given me on this planet. So whether I get an audience of one person or one million people, whether I'm in front of a young person who is 16 years old or in front of presidents, it is the same. It's the same energy. It's the same anointing that God has given and I just do my best because I know that it's not about me. It's at the end about him. So I do it um, because I believe he called me to do it. And I do it unto him. And I believe that that's who I am. Amen. That's what I, I'm here on earth to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I want to be sure that when you started in 2015, there must have been circumstances, challenges, moments that you thought you should just leave this thing. What, what I want to know, what made you not to leave it, not to just okay, ah, this thing, let me just leave it, let me just stop it and and, and, and do some other thing, uh, um, okay, that's what I want to know, because you are not just talking to me, you are yeah. talking to some of my sons and daughters, you are talking to uh, some gospel artists who are into something they are doing. First of all, they believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. But some do not hold on to the end. Even Jesus said in Matthew, in Matthew 24, 13, mm -hmm. it is those that endure to the end that shall be saved. This salvation is not only about going to heaven. It's yeah. also about the thing you do consistently. There is an end. Jesus Absolutely. is telling you there is an end. Better is the end of it. The end does not mean termination. In the, mm -hmm. You know, spirit has language. Has its own language, or English cannot describe what happens in the spirit. And here can say that there is surely something for you, but do this thing consistently. Yes. So, what made you not to give up? I think what made me it's it's a very very firm conviction that you are called to do this, that God has spoken to you, Amen, and that this is what He wants you to do. And I think the strength. It's, it's not by your strength. It's by his strength. It's Amen. Not, it's not you because at some point you would feel like there is no way. I worked consistently for five years without even having, I don't know, 10,000 francs. That was mine. <laughs> say it again. Five say, years. No, say it again. <laughs> for five years, I worked seriously hard without a salary. On, on spoken word. Not on just work. Word. On spoken word. Absolutely. A spoken word is what is seen, but it's also an organization. It has roots. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's an artistic organization, a not for profit, and a for profit is registered in three different um, in three different ministries. The spoken word is what is seen, but for you to be able to relate with several organizations, you need those roots. So all of that is 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 the roots of the same tree. It's all part of the art, because just being on stage is probably like ten percent. Okay. Yes, ninety percent is what happens behind the backstage, stage. and it's about it's not just about how talented you are on stage. It's humility it is your character it is how you can brand yourself how you can you know develop invoices do the business and the, the not-for-profit behind the art I think that is all important and all of that growth was happening in a place where there was a lot of darkness first of all I was in medical school <laughs> that that's what I had my <laughs> and I was doing well I had a cumulative GP of 3.3 .3. Wow. and I was in level 4 
I was doing really well. And in our, in our family, my elder sister too was in medicine at the time. And I really had a very, very strong conviction that it was time for me to leave and do what I was supposed to and do this. It, it was just, I, I believe that God had spoken to me. It, it was so firm. It was more real than reality to me. Hallelujah. And I felt like it was time for me to leave. And imagine, I, I would totally understand my mom or my aunties who used to... Get, get your mic closer. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Who used to, um, at the time, organize what we would later laugh at and call cry die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I left. And that was because they loved me and they didn't understand. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let me go back there. Yes. When you left to, to follow this passionate call that God laid in your heart. Yes. Back in your home. Your mother would organize something she calls cry die like, <laughs> like like she has lost one of absolutely oh god <laughs> yeah it's a same story yeah and and you would find similar patterns in the lives of other people that's what i'm who talking are called by god and and so um but then during the time not only did i not have enough support but i'll have to say my mother did support me amen but other people felt like I was crazy and even when she supported she felt like I was crazy still but she just had she's my mother the heart, the heart of a mom <laughs> the heart of a mother so you have to support but then I worked really consistently hard at the time spoken word was so unknown I was actually surprised that when we were doing the events we had I think eight or nine different spoken word artists at my time when I came to events like this I will be placed under other Okay, okay, okay. They will not even have a category they for will spoken not have word. A category to put it because they didn't know it. It was totally and completely unknown. Wow. So, but 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 consistently doing it and pushing and pushing and pushing over the years and growing, that is what has caused it to now come, you know, into the public eye as much as it is today. But it was it was a really difficult ride. It was so difficult, so it's so difficult. But I thank God because it is that conviction. Because it, it's not about it's not about it's about what what else would you do? You will find happiness and you would find purpose in nothing else. So you have no choice to just keep on doing Hallelujah. What, what God has called you to do. Mm, mm, mm. You 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 are fulfilled in your purpose. Absolutely. Yes. Once you are there, you know. Yes, you do. I, I can connect with you because that is what I preach. Amen. I feel comfortable preaching because I don't stress to preach. Absolutely. That is what God laid in my heart to do. So whether there's money, or whether not. there's no money, this is what I do. One time my wife told me that I've, I've watched you. Your best time is when you minister. Absolutely. Praise God. Amen. And I want to go back to that. You said for five years. Yes. You never had a time. This is for some of my children to hear these things. Apostle should tell us that you have been in LTM for how long? You want to, you want to blow? You want to hammer? <laughs> oh God. There's a plat LTM has a platform. Absolutely. There are some artists who don't have this type of platform. Just to minister to a people who can appreciate you is a platform. And I think that this five is just like the Chinese bamboo. <laughs> I did some research one time, and I discovered about the Chinese bamboo. Mm -hmm. You know, bamboo is is a very powerful asset. They can use it for medicine, for mm -hmm. cutting, uh, for for tissue. Tissue from bamboo is the best. Now, the Chinese bamboo is a special type of bamboo where it takes five years under the ground. If you plant the Chinese bamboo, wow. you wait for five years. It means from the first day you plant till the five years, you will not see any shoot. Yes. Wow. But the day it will shoot, it is going to grow up to 96 feet tall. In less than six weeks. Wow. 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 <laughs> so, immediately spoke five years, I thought about the Chinese bamboo. I was teaching about the principle of incubation. Wow. When a Chinese bamboo farmer plants Chinese bamboo, 
-hmm. they will fence the area and they'll be watering the Chinese bamboo every day. If you pass around the farm, the first year, the second year, you'll be laughing. I love what they're showing on the on, on the screen on screen there. Yes. <laughs> they were showing some nice things. You know, are you getting this story? Yes, yes. When they plant the bamboo, every day they'll be watering. When people come around there, they'll be like, What are you watering? You have been mm -hmm. watering for two years, three years. What is even there? Maybe what you planted is totally dead. <laughs> what 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 that these are spectators. These are people who don't know what you planted. Absolutely. They will come and tell you everything. Oh, stop this thing. Leave church. Look at your friends who went to medical school with you. <laughs> Look at where they are now. This one have been posted to this place. Oh God. If they only knew that everybody has a call, that's good. Do it well. That's it. The way they are very fast to move it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I'm getting this story. I'm guessing. But after five years, when Chinese bamboo shoots, it grows rapidly. They, they, they can track, if they track the growth, it grows in seconds. I mean in height. It can go two inches, three inches, four inches in six, 20 seconds. Wow. So in every vision, there is an incubation period. Because in those years, somebody it was very easy for someone to convince you very that leave, leave this thing. Come, very we easy. have one job somewhere <laughs> <laughs> to do. Just just follow me. They'll pay you 60000 mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm, 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 I'm truly blessed by your, your, your testimony, your love. We have a lot to talk. We have a lot to talk. Okay. But before we continue, I want you to watch our Carol Knight. Okay. We love, we love to have beautiful moments, beautiful times. I think that is what makes us spending more time in the presence of God, praising Him, thanking Him for all He has done. Let's watch a Carol Knight. It was beautiful, the usual white and red. Let's watch Carol Knight. We'll be right back. Okay. Praise God. Um. So I'm going to be asking Mark some questions and okay. maybe to get him to advise maybe our youth and our artists. One thing I'm so impressed about him is his level of humility, sir. Amen. Amen. Because a man of his caliber, I invited him for Italian night at Moliko branch, and he's that kind of a person that does not say no. He will always come, and he does not come for the money. He does it, and That's true. he's so appreciative. That's one good thing about him. He comes, he blesses the people, but then he appreciates you for inviting him. Yes. So his level of humility, I've never seen it. So I'm going to be asking you some questions. Tell us, what's that secret? Because even when you came for Limav, it was when immediately I told him, he said, no, it's an honor, I'm going to be there. On that same day, he accepted without any uh, form of, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it. So please, can you tell us, what is it? How is it that with all your portfolio, with all your um, caliber, what, what is it? What is it in you that you just love to give it to the people without even thinking of any form of payment? You are not putting money first in front of what you do. So can you tell us something about that? Wow, thank you. This is very, very um, warm. I mean, I just have to say everything from the reception... To, to the honor, to, to the privilege, to the what you've just said, I couldn't feel more at home and more valued. So thank you so much, first of all, I have to say, this is incredible. This is, this is, my heart is bigger than my mouth. I can't really express how grateful I am for how you have treated me all this while. Um, I, I think, I think it's, um, First of all, when you go through the right process and, and when, when God really takes his time to teach you and, and like I tell, like what I will always say to every young person, humility is far more attractive than talent. And um, God will take you through a process and he will break some chains and he will mold character and he will mold submission and humility and all those qualities that have to come. I think before he elevates you, he does all the work. And I think that I don't I don't take credit for 
anything i just believe i just thank god because it is the process that he put me in and also the people that were there to teach me and guide me those were the people who gave me um, the knowledge and the wisdom of how to navigate the way and also at some point um it's it at some point you would also have some experience that would teach you that certain things are not important like i think that as a visionary the least thing you should think about is money because you would block a lot of opportunities that can come to you and who knows who knows who is here i mean if i didn't come i wouldn't have had the rare privilege of meeting shepherd right. and who knows what is going to happen after this who knows and so it's really about how you treat people how you treat people how you honor people um it's it's about it's about fundamentally doing the work that god has called you to do for the purpose of the fact that god has called you to do it and i'm not saying that there is anything wrong with asking for money i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with branding yourself and putting the price tag but there is a lot of wisdom in how you do it and i think that fundamentally it's important that as christians we understand that place and that importance of, of humility and and wisdom because it really if you if you get anywhere in life it is not because of talent it is because of your character and your humility mm. um hallelujah praise god praise god hallelujah i also want to ask you this one um thing as a shepherd for your consistency now can you talk to youth especially those in church mm. how can they consistent and how can they arrive that god given purpose in them how they do it was the because you've always thought about you being patient but you've gone through some processes maybe you can advise them and um, advise them on what they can do to become like you i believe well i think that they can even become greater than me so <laughs> i don't think that they should limit themselves to me but what i believe is for sure is that firstly um you always have to put god first mm. no matter what you do no matter where you go because the f- the day you fail is the day you start you know developing shoulders and feeling like you don't need the church anymore as much as you used to i believe that is so important that's the first thing the second thing is that um god is god is a god of prayer but he's also a god of principle true and many of the things he gives us are in seed form if he gives you a dream is in seed form he ne- he hardly shows you the whole story building exactly. he just shows you the first step and when you take the first step somehow the second step reveals itself and as you keep on moving that is how the vision keeps on growing so sometimes i know how hard it can be and i really i say this from the depths of my spirit i know how hard it can get so when true. maybe your family is not with you when you're so hungry i used to trek sometimes for very long distances if i have a radio interview and i would arrive sweating as if like i was playing football or something but just going in there sometimes they wouldn't even know that it's like that you came they'll probably call you big names and That's stuff true. they wouldn't know that you didn't have any money coming there mm. but then those processes are important because they help for me so regardless of how hard it gets just keep going keep going even when things don't look well keep going even when you don't know what you're doing just keep going somehow your spirit your spirit is knows exactly where you're supposed to be how you're supposed to get there you cannot rely on your reasoning you have to rely on the promptings of god and there was a time in my life and even now but then it was really intense at the back where i constantly had to have messages like messages the messages that reverend, uh, reverend has you you always need to listen to those i mean you need to feed on the word yes but you need to listen to a man who can hold your hand mm. in the spirit you need to you need to constantly listen because if you if you don't have somebody holding you you cannot move forward i remember that there was a time when i couldn't go a day without hearing my pastor's messages constantly like on my ear because at the time you you are fragile maybe now things have materialized and the world can see what you have but in the past it was looking like you were crazy sometimes even you thought you were crazy but those messages really keep you going 
So I think if you if you if you if you have first of all the firm conviction that this is what God called you to do, that one is between you and God. You must really understand that this is what God has called you to do. Obviously, um, through whoever God has placed on your life, because you always have to respect that spiritual authority. Also, understanding that there is a process to it, and always and just keep going, even when you're not sure about what things happen things are happening just continue on that path as much as you possibly can there were times when you break down it's fine you're human there are times when you fall that happens but always get back up and always keep on push, pushing because on the other side of all of this tomorrow there is glory in christ hallelujah there, there's a lot i can get from your from your word now uh apostle divine is the first uh pastor in cameroon to bring frank edward to cameroon yes in 2015, 2015, and uh, when Frank Edward came to Cameroon, we had an interview with him, just like we're having with you right now. And uh, Apostle was asking him some questions. There's something he said that's very remarkable. He said, Every child of God, you have roots. He said, Don't disconnect from your roots. He said, God may bless you and you may be growing, but the day you get up and disconnect from your roots, you dry up. Yes. You dry up. You said you listen to your pastor's messages every day. You know, in LTM, many people want to I want to see the shepherd, I want to see the shepherd. Even if you see the shepherd, what I will tell you is not different from what I preach. If you listen to my messages, you will get my counsel. Because no matter which type of counsel I give you, it's going to be I've said it on the altar. I've said it. I will tell you in a different way, but it's the very thing I say. So, it's very important we identify where we're coming from and we listen to those words. Hallelujah. Welcome back to Shepherd This is Online. Your special edition is today, the grand finale of 2022, and we are going to enter 2023 with more wonderful programs for you in Jesus' name. Now, Mr. Mark Alonge, what I want to ask now is the crux of the matter. Um, I know we, we, we cannot do this here because it's like we need a workshop. There's always this interface that I've been studying between uh, our talent and ego. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Monetizing our talent. So from your standpoint, from your experiences, what advice, what, what, what can you tell us I'm talking of especially the house of God. I'm saying this because if you study all around the world, maybe in the United States, the, the, the pop stars, the Arab stars, they started in church. Yeah. The world led them out of Christ through this thing I'm t- talking about, money. Sure. So, what do you think we can do? Both the church and artists to see how to transform these talents into monetary form so that they will not be living for is it really greener pastures? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think there are greener pastures in the world. <laughs> but then um, I think it's a very 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 important question and a very very important point and I would like to say that what the church should do is what you're already doing, what you have already done, what you have started you have a fully equipped studio. You've created this incredible initiative, Limav, and you're, 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 you're giving this artist an opportunity to showcase their talent. You're bringing in stakeholders. You were at um, Supermo. I mean, that's, that's, that's incredible. We are not clapping. I don't know. <laughs> that's incredible. I think this, what you're doing, first of all, is what has to be done. I think you are, you are already in the process of really creating a very, very strong support system for the artist. I also think that it's fundamentally also the responsibility of the artist. True. Like any job, you would have to be good at what you do. I don't think that you, at some point, you will need to take that responsibility if you have to train your voice, you train your voice, if you have to write as an artist, whatever you have to do, you have to learn the work. The art. The art in itself. And no one can do it for you. Unfortunately, maybe in other countries, there are record labels available. 
that you can just go and sign or the ministries have record labels i don't know but in our in our context many of many of the things that we need to learn we need to teach ourselves that is true we need to teach ourselves and when we do that we are going to be able to to to, pros- to prosper financially um with our craft one other thing that is so important as far as um money is concerned i think that as an artist as a creator as an entrepreneur in christ you don't go after sugar true you don't go after ants i beg your pardon okay. if you want if you want ants you don't go after ants if you want ants you create sugar and they will come and the ants will run after hallelujah you. that's beautiful amen because i can tell you since 20 beginning of 2021 i have never applied for a grant mm-hmm. or written any application or asked to be on any platform but when you create so much value you brand yourself properly which is mm-hmm. which is also professionalizing your passion that, that is it it's not just about being passionate and maybe this is what god has given me no you have to be a pro- it's a profession as a lawyer as a doctor there are, there, are, there, are, there are rules to it so you need to learn that as a profession and I, when I, you i'm not stopping you i'm not stopping you what <laughs> you said is very very important she's the leader of the choir yeah so at times when i watch at the choir I, I'm, I'm, I'm running the vision now. I'm looking. This person singing. Do you want to become a gospel artist or you're just singing for entertainment and uh, just worshipping? You understand? Because yeah. I want to know. I need to know if this is your passion and you are going to professionalize it there for service. Because there are two things. You're, yeah. you're, you're rendering service mm-hmm. to the house of God. But I also want to know, do you want to take this for, for, for a profession? So that I know how to treat you. I know yeah. how to treat Wu. I know where to put resources. What to say to you if I know your vision. Because at times um, you cannot be in the choir as someone who wants to be a gospel artist and you're behaving as someone who is just there. Yeah. <laughs> Are you mm-hmm. getting that? I guess. It's just there. Because if you want, if this is your profession, your attitude towards service will be different. Very different. The other person can miss service. The other person, you know, they need to follow up. But you will be because that is what that is that is what you're preparing that's gonna be your livelihood. Yeah. It has to be very clear. So if you are in this aspect that you want to use to professionalize yourself tomorrow and you're behaving as so as though it means you don't even know what you're doing. You know. <laughs> it means we cannot even help you. Yeah. Because it's like the we cannot give you passion for what you do. Passion is in it. It's in it you have to cultivate it yourself. Then we see the passion that we promote you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You support. We you support promote you and yeah. promote you. So what you said is exactly what I want him to hear. Let me know if you are there. If this is what you want to do, if you want to do it, as, let me know. If you don't want, okay, I just sing it. Oh, just, just, just sing, just. You understand? Absolutely. Yeah, just sing. Praise God. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. So that's the football match, handball match, <laughs> and the football match of today. The handball match was between um, the first batch of uh, pastors. Okay. Created the first batch of pastors in. Uh, 2021, and then the second batch is 2022. So we had a beautiful handball match and football match today. Although the football match never ended well because the, the referee never understood the rules of game. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, FIFA have, have schooled him on the rules. FIFA law number 12. <laughs> I asked him to go and read. <laughs> Praise God. That oh, yeah. when, when a team is celebrating, mm-hmm. you give them time to celebrate except there is excessive celebration. And FIFA says that even if there is excessive celebration, you call them to order into the field. FIFA says that you are permitted to go out of the field, but momentarily you cannot go and stay, and you come back. Mm-hmm. So, we just called, and we are celebrating, mm-hmm. and you just blow that you pass the ball. So, FIFA calls it a Frebie goal. F-R-E-B-I-E, a Frebie goal that is not permitted. Because you are you are disadvantaging 
the opponents. So, you know, I love details. So, <laughs> 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 yes, they call it a freebie go. It's, yeah. not, it's not permitted. For example, we just call, then we are getting excited. They just say, no, they just pass the ball. It means, and for a friendly match again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, it's not, it's, not, it's not right. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We like the prophetic, you know, Tim? The prophetic. Yes. We're going to watch the prophecy given to one sister, Sister Imelda, okay. about her mother's uh, problem with childbearing. They'll be right back. Okay. okay, let's watch that prophecy. Just one minute and then eight seconds. We'll be right back. Emelda! 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 Are you Emelda? Are you Emelda? Yeah. I have to help you. Where's your mother? She's in Malabo. She's in Malabo? Yes, sir. After you, how many children are there? No, I'm the no one. one. I have to help you. Oh! I have to help you. Professor! I'll be looking for the child. Baradu Shaka Brahan de Kasia Kaba. I wanted you to give me enough time, enough time. I need time today. I say I need time today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. Expose the root cause of my problem. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. After you, she has not been able to have any other child. She has not been able. She has tried. She has cried. She has not been able to have any other child. Malo zande koria bakaria de gazia. Emiando ko zande kabragenya hiya. Pre supra antashia. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mr. Mark, I want to ask you this question. It is, it is, it is sure that at this level, you are, you are a mentor to some. Do you have people that you train? Absolutely. I mean, in, in a spoken word? Yes, I do. Okay, okay. So, can you just tell us about your platforms and maybe organizations okay. that you connect to and that? Okay. Um, about, about the give back or about the organizations? The organizations you connect to because... This okay. is not just about only you. Okay, there are many yeah. You connect to. Yes. You yeah. connect to, and they also help you. Then you also train. Yeah. It's, a, it's a chain. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I, I work. I worked with several local organizations until 2019, um, when we did an event, a spoken word event at Mountain Hotel in Boya, and then we're privileged. We did invite a lot of UN agencies. That was 2018, 2019, when because of the conflict. Many UN agencies did come to Cameroon, and they, some of them had offices in Boya, so we did invite them. And from there, I had a first invitation to the Canadian High Commission in Yaoundé. Wow. Then I went there and I performed, and that was my entrance into the UN system. So since Amen. then, I've worked with the Canadian High Commission, the British High Commission, the Israeli High Commission. And you all clapping. <laughs> And there is this organization called the Frederick Albert Foundation. Last year, they hired us to do their opening ceremony for a very, very big convention they were organizing in, for Central Africa. Amen. Um, so we did their opening ceremony. It had, it it had 3,000 capacity. It had high commissioners and ministers and governors. Um, then um, recently, we have had partnerships with MTN. We have had partnerships with um, other organizations. But then one of the greatest things um, that happened this year was that I, I got an invitation to Egypt to perform at the African Bank, that's Africa Export Import Bank Annual General Assembly and it had the president of the oh. Arab Republic of Egypt wow. present. So I've, I've traveled to several other places but I had never had the rare privilege of being right before a head of state. A head of state. That's and true. I was there performing in front of him. And then we also had several ministers and governors from all over Africa. It was a huge, huge, huge okay. platform. And performing there was one of the highlights that I, I've had. Um, then um, I also recently won um, some awards for 
African Awards, like the African Podcast and Voice Artist Awards, I won for Best Spoken Word Artist. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, 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 um, it's an organization that organizes that award show. So they have a series of events coming up next year, and they want me to be the face of the events. Okay. And um, yeah, so UNDP, UNESCO, UNHCR, recently UN Women. Um, that we worked with several other, usually mostly around the, the, the humanitarian ecosystem okay. in Central Africa. That's mostly been our platform. But also recently we are getting now into into for-profit companies. Okay. Yes. The past was mostly not for profit, but now it's getting into companies. All right. So how how do you uh, get your, your mentees? Yeah. They come to you or you choose them? They obviously come to me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You can't really choose because if you, I think if you go out trying to choose, you might choose the wrong one. The wrong one. Because you cannot really read people. Um, uh, but then they come to you. And even for, of those who come to you, you would have to be able to discern spiritually who well, you should we, put your should, energy that's true. <laughs> in. That's true. Because some people come and they say, okay, they want you to mentor them. But at the end of the day, they are not very serious about what they want to do. And fundamentally, Many people think that I, I would mentor just spoken word artists, but it's it's probably generally visionary. That's true. Especially in the artistic sphere, whether it is modeling or it is music or it is many people who just are in that artistic sphere, they usually come. And, and what I would do basically is that I would try to understand what they are doing. I would try to, and many times when you look at them, you would see part of yourself in them and at what stage Wow. where when you look at them and then you'll be able to know okay maybe this person needs more connections maybe this person needs more help maybe direction in this or that level and then you're able to provide that that's beautiful no have an except of the mouth okay. yes the <laughs> mouth that you were there i'm wow. going to call now for an except of the mouth let's watch we'll be right back church and we need the grace to handle the talents in church less they live to the world especially because of money hallelujah we are just starting the winner of last year noah's by the grace of god we have produced her album the album will be released today So I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, can you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer, gonna keep on, keep it on. As a Christian, as a woman, from the Bible, from the scripture, they say, out of my belly that flows rivers of living water. If you are given that freedom, what would you do with your freedom? I will do rejuvenation because I'm a woman, because I'm a strong, because I'm a Christian. In his light, because indeed, out of my belly that flows rejuvenation. This one is for your freedom. One of you. What's 1.5 million? My marriage will be the only marriage will get long break. Yes. When time is any man go chop for years. No, that one. That for the. How much? How much be school fees for for do degree for Cameroon? One point five million. People they get hats. I drew that out with pens, color pens, and I made a different shading technique called cross hatching. 
Enjoying the program? Are we really enjoying the program? Okay, okay. Very soon, Reverend Christopher will be coming to your table just to ask you how you're enjoying this beautiful program in the name of Jesus. Now, we want to talk about your organization. Tell us about your organization. I mean, deeply, your organization, what you do, and also tell us how we can contact you because okay. someone is watching. Wow, they have heard about you. Okay, um, you know, I'm now. As a presenter, as a journalist, I'm asking the minds, the minds of the viewers. The viewers. <laughs> <laughs> what can you ask him to give us? Maybe the email address, the website. Yes. How can we contact him? How can we get to him? If we want to get to him, so please. 
this is the time for you to talk to them about your organization. Thank you. Okay, my organization is called Straw Academy. Straw? Straw Academy. Spell it. Straw. Like okay. A, like a straw. S T R A W. A W. Okay. Academy. It's one oh, word. Though. Okay. You know, it wasn't a very straight road. When we started, we created Strawberry Incorporated, and then it was a long story. But then the organization is called Straw Academy. Straw Academy. Yes, Straw Academy um, has over the years dealt in a lot of different things. Um, but then fundamentally, it's an art-based organization okay. and a record label. And uh, what do we do? Well, we are a production house. We create the content. We have produced several videos. Wow. We have a recording studio and a video studio um, where we produce videos. And then we are also record label. We do marketing. We do branding for artists. And um, um, the Straw Academy initially began as, as a hub. Okay. Initially, then moved on to on to a business, and then now an ad based organization. So you grew through that that process. So we have three registrations. We are registered as a not for profit. We are registered as a for profit, and we are registered as an ad based organization. Can you clap for that? <laughs> <laughs> I, told, I, I said I said we we uh, about talking about monetizing our talents. We cannot talk it just now. Yeah. There's a lot. What you have just told me that is exactly. What we need to learn, yes, that you can have your organization, you reach as a non-profit, you need also register as, as you said. Yeah. Now, that is that is where we need to get this understanding that it is in these ways. You know, I was I, I was watching one of these uh, uh, skit makers in Nigeria, and they said this thing is about the the content they create. They said yeah. once they are the ones that create the content, they can place it on twenty five Facebook accounts that they have. Yeah. Facebook is not going to say that because you place this video in this account, they will not pay you for this other one. It's your, it's your own. It's your own. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just a, a, it's a multifaceted uh, way of getting whatever you can, you, can, you can get, which is very, very important. Please, where is the headquarters of your organization? It's here in Boya. In Boya. Yeah, it's here in Boya. And you could, it's uh, actually just around um, the Biaka. Okay. Biaka Hospital just behind. Okay. And it's very easy for you to get there. Uh, we are we are very mobile, and the, the nature of our uh, of our our work is very very um, unconventional, will I say? Okay. Because we are not very office seated people. That's true. <laughs> so many times you might come to the office and just see one person, or you see two people, and most of all we are traveled somewhere, or we are shooting a video somewhere. Exactly. That's, I will that's probably be in the office always overnight, <laughs> and everybody is sleeping in the morning, so it's a little bit difficult. But then um, one of the organizations we work with is the German Federal Foreign Office, I forgot to say. And um, we, we run a constant project with them every month. And so that's one of the running activities that you will find okay. in Straw Academy. So you can always contact me very easily. You, you can just go to my website. I think that's the, easy, the easiest way you can have. It's macalunga.com. You can also um, contact me by email. Mac, how did this spell the Mac? Mac is just M-A-C. It's not M-A-R-K. <laughs> Alunga is A L U N G E A L U N G E. So macalunga.com. If you go there, you would see a lot of our work, videos. You would see albums that are available, some free, some for sale, and you can always contact us very, very easily. On or by email, you can contact us macalunga official and macalunga. All my social media handles are just macalunga. <laughs> Somebody's asking now that they want to also get the official phone number. Okay, the official phone number. You can easily call us at 653-957-382. That is 653-957-382. Yes. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now, we, we give so much attention to our crossover night because it's, it's a beautiful, spiritual, yet very relaxing uh, event we always have. And uh, from 2021 into 2022 we had a night of great grace so every uh end of year the the theme of the night always reflects in the theme of the year so this is the night of kings with the king of kings maybe the theme of the year is the year of kings well. <laughs> because night of great grace brought us into the year of exceeding grace this year Amen. so uh, i want us to watch the excerpt of the night of great grace that brought us into 2022. Amen. Let's watch right back. <laughs> Sincerely, we are happy to have you uh, because 
um, your your words give a lot of hope to some artists in this ministry that are listening to you and out there too listening to you and uh, we appreciate your time we appreciate your love for God because this is not just about time you have the love for him mm -hmm. that's the first point because I've heard you say you should love him first yes and uh, by the special grace of God we hope there will be many instances we'll be having even if it's not on TV I mean a lot of collaborations a lot of ideas that will come up for us to see how we can work in the name of Jesus Amen. before you wrap up I want you to just give us your maybe your last for this program yeah the word of maybe appraisal or what you think about uh, the future of of spoken word yeah in Cameroon in Africa wow. praise God because this this is the engine this is an engine that you, you you've ignited with others and uh, just like in the film industry we have the uh, I've forgotten the name of that boss something mm -hmm. uh, Alan Menguetz and they are doing a wonderful job in the music industry are doing a wonderful job in this in this ministry of spoken word you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're doing a job so what is your word for for the future absolutely thank you thank you Shepard. I think um, the the I see the future I see is so promising that it it is it, it makes me teary sometimes mm. because it is interesting how in such a short time um, spoken word that was not recognized at all is now recognized at the national level hallelujah so that hallelujah That's at it. the ministry of culture is recognized even by the international organizations it is even much more famous among the humanitarian community so i think that the future is really bright amen if you if anybody was if anybody missed yesterday well i'm sorry for you but yesterday just the spoken word we saw on that stage is Amen. enough evidence hallelujah to tell you that the future <laughs> can you put your hands together for that the spoken word is bright Amen. Very bright so i'm i'm very i'm very um lucky i i just i i, I think of myself as really blessed to be part of this um, um program and also part of the uh, the whole spoken word um uh, spoken word journey movement in Cameroon and uh, I see the young generation I see the people who are coming up and I know that you know the future is really in good hands amen amen please I'm going to give just three opportunities for anyone to ask can I ask any question absolutely ask any question to Mr. Mark please be fast anyone if you don't ask him you're not being following up it's like you're just waiting for your your pork your barbecue you know <laughs> yes so you have the mic you ask any question he said is open he can answer that question to you right now you 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 tell us your name before uh remember bless sir remember bless mom god bless you um uh, shalom to everybody my name shalom. is reverend pastor Yenti and brother mark shalom uh, in your in our conversation this evening you said uh, you talk about um that in quote crazy thing that you did while in the medical school leaving school for a spoken yeah. word which you now take seriously and your parents the reaction of your friends perhaps your family members and that kind of today what is the relationship how do they look at you and what do you do wow <laughs> that's wow. that's a very clap for that question beautiful beautiful that's, question that's, that's that's a good question i think i would summarize it um i'll summarize the answer next the person question. should just stand very ready um with something my mom said to me recently I think that happened this year. Was it this year? Early this year, and I we won a contract that was a lot of money. Okay. And um, I remember when I won the contract, and I I I normally would call her and I'd tell her that you know this we have won this contract, and she was like, okay, that's that's amazing. But the day that you know they actually sent the money to our account, <laughs> 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 and we actually I I think the the um, mobile banking organization account it comes on your phone and I showed her on the phone and she said that she is so grateful she ne never ever stopped me from doing what I, I thought I was wow doing. can you clap for that she said she's so mm. grateful. and she, she even said that she doesn't see anything to envy in the other people 
because she believes that what I've chosen is the best path for me. Amen. And it's just incredible. And every other person, those my aunties with whom they used to do cry die, <laughs> <laughs> all of them have a very different perception now. And I'm Hallelujah. really grateful to God for that. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, one of these uh, uh, Nigerian comedians used to say that, oh, I don't know whether it's them or one camera, that when they used to go out to do comedy, their father would be like, what? What do you want to do? Do you yeah. think your life is going to... But the first day they brought back something, and it was called, whether it's one of three thousand francs or one of three thousand naira, and the father was like, "That is good, my son. Yeah, that this comedy thing is very good. Go on, <laughs> go on, do They more. want to see something. They want, to, they, see they want something. to see something. Amen. I think this contract because we asked ourselves, my father was a principal and a teacher, and how many years he worked, and if he had to calculate. <laughs> His, his salary. How much my father worked his whole <laughs> life, it was not even up to the amount of that contract. That's true. It was crazy. So, mm. when you look at it and be like, and it, it's my, the, the, the mindset will be like, well, what are you doing on the mic with that? Oh, we God. don't ever pay a bill. I mean, but then she saw that and they want to see evidence, your parents. Uh, and it, it's from a place of love though, but they yes. want to see evidence and then I, I believe that we showed the evidence you needed. <laughs> Thank Amen. You. Okay, we have another question for you, Mr. Mark. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Remember, sir. God bless you. Okay. Um, permit me call you Minister Mark. You're <laughs> a young, fine, fresh guy, and uh, definitely you must have grown up with a lot of distractions, especially from one, ladies, and yeah. two, your, your peers, like your yeah. peer group. Now, my question is, how did you manage to, you spoke about having to trek a very long distance sometime for an interview and all of that. There is no way you will have done all of that without some petty distractions like your peer groups comparing themselves to you, like, say, boy, aha, that's where you are, and see, look at us. Yeah. And definitely must have seen some of them go ahead. So, how did you manage to creep and stay on what has made you who you are today? Thank you. Thank wow. you so much. Wow. This uh really powerful questions. questions thank you um i think let me I, I, i'll address the question in two ways the distraction from ladies and the distraction from your peers um from your peers i think the i think i think what really saved me is just the the mindset it's like it's like you are already down on the ground you couldn't get downer Okay. <laughs> like you, you could not be worse. He, he was down fierce door that fall. You're already there. Nothing. So you are already a humiliation. You are already a failure, and you see that people call you that everywhere that you go, and so you really don't mind anymore, and you don't mm. care anymore, and you're you're so focused on what God has called you to do, and it is your His vision for you that is more real than what people say about mm. you. And if you if you just keep focusing on that, I think that is the way to get through it just focus on what god has called you to do obviously um for many young people women are really a distraction um and also probably the need to satisfy women is a distraction or probably just the need to go after women is a distraction i think that it's and, and men for the women and men. men too for the women i think i think that the the, the goal of it is really focus because I think when you when your mind is focused on when I'm focused on looking at this Martha Guinness bottle, somehow I'm out of focus of the other things that are around. True. So I think that the power is to focus on God's word, focus on on the goal and what you you really want to do, and put putting all your energy into that. Somehow the distractions come and they melt away. They come and they melt away. There are people. Who will come to into your life and at some point they realize that no they just cannot move you they just cannot shake your values no matter how hard they try they realize this one mm. cannot be moved in this direction so true yes yeah, so you they, they, they just get distracted they just get um frustrated and disappointed because many people would feel bad it call them maybe they maybe you don't have what your friends have or anything but you really just don't care so but you live your life because that's what you you believe God has called you to do. <laughs> Thank you. Can you put your hands together for such beautiful wisdom filled answers? You still have another question. Why are the girls not asking? Why are the females not asking? Three males have asked. <laughs> okay.
Amen. Bless her. Shalom. Amen. Bless mom. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Also, thank you very much. I wanted to ask, you know, before now, there was a life of maybe once, as we already said here, it went maybe a very long time, five years, struggling mm-hmm. without money and some other stuff. Yeah. Now, I'm sure, I know now it's different from that time. Yeah. And I want to ask, how is your service now as compared to that time? How do you manage the mobility now and everything with, with your service? In the house of God. Service in the house of God? In the house of God. Wow. That's that's a very, very, very important question. Put your hands together for that question. question. I think all the questions are carefully. Yes, so carefully thought out. And it's so important because, especially as Christians, this is a really, really important point, especially for the talented Christian. That's true. Um, Like I said, humility and submission is very important in the spirit. And I think... I think we were, we were we were in the car coming and um past and reverend made a statement um and he said that they are now allowed to go out that's true so i think i think you have to have someone who can give you that permission to say it's time for you to move and you know god will always give you someone a, 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 a pastor who is secure who understands the vision of god and understands the vision that god has given you and then there will be a time because throughout this year and next year, I'm going to be traveling a lot and many, many times missing a lot of services. But my pastor understands that. Hallelujah. He understands where I've come from. He understands who I am. He understands the process. So he has seen me through all those different stages. And now he's seen me through this particular stage. Amen. So you don't have to break off or anything. You don't have to to be disrespectful to anybody i think that when the time is right just as you are spiritually sensitive your man of god is also spiritually sensitive and he would he would give you that permission to move yes so i think that's how you manage another applause for that all all that's that's it amen this is what you're saying is very true because apostle i i i lived by his words he he was teaching one time and he told us that he said you are not humble i was like what do you mean? He said you are not humble because um, humility is better known when you have all, when you have everything, and you can still stay humble. It's not when you don't have anything. You'll be humble because not having any everything will humble you. Humble you. Yes. <laughs> so humility is better seen when there is some extent of success. Yeah. That's when you you know because. If you choose someone now, just give the person 10 million <laughs> and watch. They will use that 10 million and buy a car and tell you that they are traveling to Yaoundé <laughs> <laughs> to catch a program, <laughs> which is not, you understand, which is yeah. not actually what is supposed to be done. So, what you're saying is very, very true. At this stage, your pastor understands you. I understand mm-hmm. the pastor. You are not going to say you are going to, 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 to Cote d'Ivoire for spoken word when it's not. Yeah. So, we, we thank God we have a lady to ask a question or three, three, Gentlemen, ask so okay. <laughs> let's have a feminine touch. Amen, bless Father. God bless you. Amen, bless Mom. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Use your mic. Use your carry. It's on. Just take it closer to your. Thank you, Mr. Mark, for coming, uh, for honoring this invitation. Like it's not like question though, but it's like a favor from you. I want to ask on okay. behalf of LTM. Okay. Okay. Though it's not my view, but your words of encouragement from your expression, there's one that caught me more, Lend the Art, when you were uh, t- giving your storyline from how you started. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there are youths from, we have a department, the theater and arts department. CCA. So I believe they would really want to express themselves better and best. So I want to ask you this favor, please. I will wish you give an opportunity to show them the right path. Because you say you need someone to lead you to the next step. So the father will try his best, but it's not his field. But I believe with this opportunity, the theater art will increase. We'll be able to win youths that belongs to this department. They come and go. But I believe if you can speak, I believe just that one person that can catch that light, meaningfully. Put your hands together for her. Okay. 
Thank you so much. I would definitely, I would definitely be honored to. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to see that improvement in our next anniversary on the 27th of April. Okay, okay. Most definitely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's good. You know, I teach this. I'm a, I'm a man of God, yes. I'm a mentor. I'm a life coach. But if you are um, a businessman, there's no problem for you to have a business mentor. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you understand? Absolutely, yeah. that, that It should be clearly, clearly uh, spelled in church. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I have the ability of the word and insight in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can talk to you about business. But there is someone whose field is that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so when I teach them, I tell them, okay, I don't even have a problem if you have a mentor in that aspect who is not a believer. Because it has nothing to do with God. But now, that mentor should not be telling you the things I'm supposed to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting that? Absolutely. Which Absolutely. is the word of God and the way of God. That is not that mentor's place. But the mentor should tell you about accounting. Yes. <laughs> you understand? And how to grow in accounting. Not those teachers who teach then they leave that going to the word of God and say that all these pastors that is not your field <laughs> stay with your um, uh, maybe chemistry mm -hmm. <laughs> just stay there <laughs> you understand yeah, yeah so true. it's very important we need and thank God this is a mentor in the Christendom yeah. so it's better in the name of Jesus Amen Hallelujah Amen. who is happy to be here uh, can we do a clap for Mr. Mark no, that's not the clap. That's not the clap. He told us this clap that you have to rub your hands, make it warm. Yes, let's do five. Five stands for grace. Wow. Five stands for grace. Use your mic. Uh, uh, help. Oh, you came with a question. <laughs> oh, God. Can we rub our hands? Rub it, rub it. Five. You'll be five. So we're going to do it five times. Five times, that's it. Rub it. Let it be so hot. Faster, faster, faster. Let us go. One. Give it. Two. Three. Four. And the biggest. Bye. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, viewers of Shabbat Online, you're welcome again. We have come to the end of the program and this is just